just saw I saw Savages today. Not today, yesterday. You know, with the with Blake Lively and those pothead guys, and it looked pretty good from the trailers. And I I put the link to the trailer in my description. If you haven't seen it, please do watch it because I'm going to reference it a few times. But basically, I'm giving this movie a zero out of one. It is not a good movie. I wouldn't recommend it. I would go ahead and watch any other action movie over it. You know, it is an action movie. It's got cool settings. It's got, you know, cool action. You know, but as far as action movies go, this one is not on the top. Definitely toward the bottom. And I have a couple of reasons why it's not a very good movie. First, I, I, I've been kind of... I read a little bit about it. It looks like it's based on a book. And I'm not really sure how that book could have been at all good. And if it's based on a bad book, then who is going, man, we really need to make this book into a movie? Who's doing that? Oliver Stone? You think he'd fucking know better? I mean, can't tell a good book from a bad book? But whatever, okay. So, what's wrong with this movie? The biggest problem with this movie is Blake Lively. Uh, I don't I don't like her. You know, she's very good looking, but the problem is I'm just sick of how fucking cool she is and how hot she is right now. For no reason. She's just a pretty actress. Like, if you call her an actress. Because the problem with her is that she just plays herself in everything I've ever seen her in. She's kind of like Julia Roberts. And I don't know how she made it anyway. Because, I mean, she just plays Julia Roberts in every fucking movie. So, like, Lively is, you know, I've seen her in Gossip Girl, playing Serena Vanderwoodson. And oddly enough, which is, is kind of interesting, the last episode of Gossip Girl, Serena Vanderwoodson went to California. And then this movie came out. So it's pretty much like Serena Vander Woodson went to California, met these two potheads, and got caught up in this drug cartel. And it would flow perfectly from Gossip Girl. Because she acts the same. She's the same exact person. She's like this rich, spoiled girl who has kind of a troubled family life, who can't ever make a decision for herself, so she just leads on as many men as possible. And that's what she's doing in this movie. She has these two guys that she's fucking, both of them. They're both, I guess, okay with it. Uh, and she just can't pick which is better. And she, she says she loves them both equally. And so I'm not really getting anything important from her at all. You know, she just kind of gets kidnapped and acts like herself. And I'm not really impressed with it. And she's kind of a big part of the movie. And le I think she kind of doesn't carry it. You know, she does not carry it. And then along with, let's talk about this love triangle they have. There's two guys. One guy's kind of a hard-ass, like, war veteran. And he's a real badass and loves to kill people. And the other guy is kind of like a savvy, hippie businessman. Like, everybody's favorite guy. He's like, you know, good guy Greg. And they are selling the really the best weed in California. And she is in love with them both. And she has sex with them both. And they're both, although they never openly talk about it, they know about it. And this creates a pretty interesting dynamic. And I, I was looking forward to this somehow getting wrapped up. Because they actually reference it in the movie a few times where they say, you know, no one can, three people can't love each other equally, or, you know, they love each other more than they love you, or, like, whatever. They, they kind of talk about it a lot, but it never gets a resolution. It never actually gets resolved, and nothing actually comes from it. Which, they, they point to this relationship they have a lot as important, but it never actually is made into, like, a moral lesson or anything. It just kind of happens. And it leaves you thinking, Why? Like, why is that necessary for this movie? It's like it's like a red herring. It's a distraction. Because the movie's about two guys fighting the cartel to rescue a girl. The fact that she's fucking both of them is really not important to the, the real story. It's kind of like a sub-story, but it never has a, like a climax or resolution. So it's just a distraction. Like, it very easily could have been, like, one guy's sister, one guy's girlfriend... Or one guy's, like, ex-girlfriend, but they left on, but they stopped in good terms, and then the new guy's girlfriend. Like, they could both be loving her and wanting to rescue her without both equally, like, having sex with her. It's just confusing. Like, it... I mean, I'm not confusing that like, I don't get what's going on, but just confusing in the way that... It's never resolved. Like, is one of them loving her more? Do they really have pent-up aggression toward each other about it? Like, there's a really big kind of conversation that should have happened in that movie about it, but it never did. It's kind of like a... It leaves it hanging, you know, and it's it's, it's not good. It, it's there for no reason. In, in the book, maybe, it gets resolved, you know, whatever. Okay, second off, this movie is really led by a monologue. Uh, Serena Vanderwoodson, or Blake Lively, she monologues the whole movie. I hate monologues, and a lot of people do. It's really just cheap to have it. To have her talk about what's going on instead of just showing you what's going on. 
Well, in this movie, they talk about it and show it. It's like they don't believe that the audience can follow along with the pretty pictures they're showing, and they actually have her speak to explain everything that's going on. It's really, like, it's insulting. It's insulting. And the way the trailer starts, if you watch the trailer, and the way the movie begins, she says, Blake Lively, just because I'm telling the story doesn't mean I'm alive at the end of it. Now, to me, right away, that told me that she is 100% not alive at the end of it. Because if she is alive at the end of it, and she's telling the story, then why the fuck would she say she might not be alive at the end of it? Just a fake suspense? Just to completely fabricate a sense of tension for me? To go, I don't know what's going to happen at the end? I don't know what's going to happen in the end at all anyway. I mean, I can assume, I assume, see, as, as watching action movies, you know, my whole life, I assume that the hero and the girl are always going to live at the end. Okay, that's how action movies go. The fact that she said that to me says, oh, this is kind of cool. This movie's not going to be like every other action movie I've ever seen. Well, it is. Spoiler alert, she isn't dead, and she makes it at the end. How fucking boring. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a classic action movie trope, but if she's going to come out and say that she might not be alive at the end, and then she is... Who, who the fuck are you trying to jerk off? You're trying to just seriously, literally trick the audience into thinking that she's not going to make it at the end and then lie? Like, what the fuck? You might as well say it's based on a true story, too. I mean, why not? Lie, lie it up, you know? Let's leather it on pretty thick. And then she says it again later. She goes, like I said before, I might not be alive at the end. But she's still alive at the end. She says it two times. Just to make sure you remember she might not make it at the end. Because obviously you're thinking she will. What the fuck? Just, just let the movie play. No one knows what's going to happen in the end until the end happens. Just let the movie go. And then at the very end of the movie, they have this really big fucking monologue about what happens at the end. Like, they can't just show images of what happens. They can't just show everybody at the end living their lives. She has to explain what I'm looking at. It's really cheap. Monologues are cheap. There's a time and place for them, but an action movie isn't a place for it. You don't need a fucking monologue exposition in an action movie. It's not necessary. It's really like bang, bang, kill, kill, love story. Who the fuck needs a monologue to explain it to me? I'm not an idiot. Okay, let's talk about the, the graphic torture and murder scenes in this movie. <laughs> like, you know, you guys, if you see my videos, you know I've watched, you know, some sick movies in my time. I'm not against seeing graphic violence. And I'm actually for graphic violence. Torture scenes I don't like as much, but, you know, I've seen them all. I, I, you know, this movie has some pretty sadistic torture scenes. And I'm, I'm not really sure why. I was watching this movie with my girlfriend who's watching this movie because she's a Gossip Girl fan who likes uh, Blake Lively. She was, she did not sign up to watch a, a guy's eyeball dangling over his face. Okay? A guy's eye is, is out of his socket dangling over his face. I mean, I saw that in Hostel. But that's the, the, that was, the, that was the, the money shot of the movie. That's not the money shot of this movie. That wasn't in the trailers. That wasn't given... That wasn't told to the audience anyway. All of a sudden, you're watching this kind of, you know, lighthearted action drug movie, like, you know, Tango and Cash back in the day, and then all of a sudden, we got a guy being tortured brutally and burned alive. Very graphic. And it was, you know, really shocking and unnecessary here. This movie is like kind of a love story where, you know, it, it just seemed really out of place, and it was really hard to watch in a movie like this. And I, I'm sure a lot of people in the theater were not expecting that at all, and it's like, why? Why is that there? They could have had a, you know, if they want to have a torture scene, they could have done it off screen. They could have done some screaming off screen, or they could have just done it a totally different way. You know, like it didn't have to be so graphic and brutal. It just wasn't for this movie. It's really bizarre. And then there was just some pretty graphic, you know, headshots and kill shots, and it didn't seem like the place for it. It just seemed really, really disjointed from the rest of the rest of we were watching. <laughs> A lot of beheadings and, like, just gay murders. All right. The movie had... So, okay, this is the part that really... I was actually down with this movie up until the very end. I mean, I was troubled by Blake Lively. I was bothered by the monologue. I was not a fan of the torture scenes. And then the whole love triangle. I was kind of still waiting and excited for the love triangle to be wrapped up at the end. So I was like, that was I was on the edge for that. I was on the edge, maybe, for Blake Lively to die at the end because she said it. So, it, building up to the end, the movie was pretty exciting. But then the ending was such a fucking letdown that the movie just tanked completely. Just complete bomb. So here's how it goes. I'm going to spoil it completely because I don't want you to see this movie, so I don't care if I spoil it. 
Don't watch it. I'm just going to tell you what happens. Uh, they're, they kidnap the drug cartel. Salma Hayek plays the, the, the princess of the drug cartel. And she kidnapped like Lively because she wants these guys to get on her, like, on her uh, payroll. Okay. So they get her back by kidnapping Selma Hayek's daughter and then doing a girl switch, you know, hostage switch, and, like, be done with it. So they're in the middle of the desert about to make the switch. And then uh, there's a big shootout takes place and everybody ends up dead. And the two boys in Blake Lively are laying in the grass, are laying in the sand dying, and they're all like three together. And then it just pans out like from the top and it pans out and they're all just laying there dead in the sand together, dying together. I loved it. That really, that really had everything figured out. She wasn't alive at the end. Uh, you know, they died for love. They both, they all love each other. It turns out they all do love each other equally. They never had that whole conversation about whatever. They're all hugging on the sand, dying together, and, you know, I guess kind of happy, sort of. You know, in a kind of a sick, dark comedy kind of happiness, like an irony. I loved it. And then the monologue cuts in and says, that's what I wanted to happen, but this is what really happened. And then they play a completely different ending in which everybody makes it at the end and everybody's fucking all hugs and kisses. And nobody's even dying. They play they play two endings in the movie. They play one and say that's what it should have been, and then play a second one. What the fuck is going on there? How it, it, it's like they couldn't like they had both endings, and they couldn't decide which is better. So they made one into like a fantasy sequence and one into a real ending and played them both. I'm really confused by why they would do that. It doesn't add any value to the movie. It, I mean, they play the better ending and then tell you it's not the real ending. And then they play a much worse ending. So, I mean, I guess, okay, just play the better ending and, and leave it at that. Or don't show me the better one and then show me how bad you fucked up in not using that one. Like, you just admit to me that you're an awful writer or director or producer, whoever's fucked responsible. You just admit it to me that you can't fucking write, a, write it any properly. Because you did and then you, you couldn't pick. Well, what the fuck? It's like... This, they, they, I just, I'm, I'm just stunned. Like, if you're going to have an alternate ending, put it in the DVD and let me watch it as an alternate ending. Don't just put it in the movie like a fucking dream sequence. It, it's unbelievable. You know, like, 100, 500 Days of Summer? You know that movie where he has a fantasy ending and a real ending, but they play it split screen together, and it's kind of fun to watch both? That's what, that's doing it right. That's the way the ending was intended. It's like, here's what he wished would happen, and here's what really happened. That's not what's happening here. I mean, I don't really believe that, that, that she wishes she would die and both of her lovers would die. That's not what she wished would happen. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So then the ending, instead of the ending, they all, like, fucking make it out alive, get everybody back, everybody's happy, and then they go about their separate ways. I guess they're sad. I'm not sure if they end up together or apart at the end. It's not really clear. But they all are all still in love, and everything is really fucking hunky-dory. And for a movie that takes you on such a brutal journey... Having everything be a fairy tale ending is really is really cheesy and totally out of character of what you, you you've come to expect. So, there's the movie. I mean, it's it's not good. It's not a good movie. A lot of shit happens that is not important. There's a whole bunch of I think there's a lot of twists and turns in it with a lot of backstabbing, but I don't remember all any of it because at the end it's just such a fucking cheesy happy ending that it really doesn't matter what happens in the middle. It doesn't really matter. They have a really... They insult the audience a ton just with the monologues and the, the nonsense. Blake Lively's acting is, you know, not that great. It's just a bad movie. You know, I, w I want my money back. I'd rather watch any Van Damme movie over that. Any. Or any Stallone movie. So there you go. I hope you guys like my review. Uh, do not go see it. Got a zero out of one.